In the last section, we successfully tried to sign a user in, but we got an error message back here. We're going to go ahead and immediately make use of this error message and make sure we just post it here on our login form to let the user know that they uh, failed to, in their login attempt. Now, before we go ahead and make use of this error message, let's think about how we're going to make use of it. So, we want to take this error message here, you know, this error.message is specifically the message we want to show, and insert it somehow into our render form here. And how are we going to do that? Well, this is another case where we can use our state. When the user tries to sign in, but they fail, that's really changing the state of our component here. They are now in a state in which they have failed to sign in. So if they have failed to sign in, we'll add a state variable called error message. And by default, there will be no error message. But as soon as there is an error, we will change our state to reflect that error. So we'll say this dot set state error message is error dot message. You know, this is the message that was that we just console logged out in the Chrome console. The invalid login parameters right here. Let me dial this up a little bit. There we go. So now, whenever the user fails to sign in, we'll go ahead and update the state to contain that new error message. So with this, it then gets really simple to show the error message inside of our component. We'll just add another text input here, and it will say this dot state dot error message. And we'll also add on a style on here. We'll just reuse the styles dot label. So this is going to be really straightforward. By default, when the user first sees the sign-in form, there is no error message. It's an empty string. So let's go ahead and save and refresh. And you'll see that there's, you know, there's no error message here. There's, it's just an empty string. When the user tries to sign in and they get an error message back, it will update the state with a new error message. And so our component will re-render and it will show the error message that was just returned here. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. We'll put in some dummy information, and then we'll sign in, and hey, invalid login parameters. So we could probably, you know, make that error message a little bit more friendly, but this is definitely one that I'm gonna leave up to you to, to pretty up a little bit. If you wanna make the error message a little bit more user friendly, we could add a function here that just said, you know, this dot error message, and then return or add another function our component that returned a nicely formatted error message. Something that said like, you know, please enter uh, or please retry to log in or, you know, something similar to that. Okay, so this is looking good so far. I'm gonna refresh again. All right. So we've handled the fail case. We now need to handle the success case, the case in which a user successfully logs in. So to test that case, we need to have a user to log in as. So you might be thinking, great, you know, we need to build the entire sign up form, give the user the ability to sign up, sign up, and then come back here and test it out. Well, you know, luckily not quite. Parse has an awesome console online that allows us to manage all the data for the application that we've created within our app. We can use this console to create a new test user. So let's do that now. I'm going to pop open my web browser. And actually, I'm going to stick on the user documentation. We might want this later. Um, actually, we'll just, what the heck. So I'm going to open up my Parse account here. So you can just go to parse.com and then sign in as yourself. When you sign in, you'll immediately be presented with the dashboard. So the dashboard shows all of your running applications. And you can see that right now I have one application, just my authentication option, authentication application, which I created just a couple minutes ago. So let's go ahead and we'll click on the bottom left core. So by clicking on core, it will take us to the parse management console for core feature set. And the core feature set is basically like, you know, the core stuff that Parse does. There's some uh, you know, data in here, which is what we're really concerned about. And there's some other features in here 
And at the top, you can also see, uh, we could also look at some analytics, push notifications, blah, 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 all this other good stuff in here. So for right now, we really just care about our data. And specifically, we really just care about our users. So whenever we create a parse application, we get this you know, backend data bucket. We get this bucket of all this data that we can push data to, and it's specifically data for our application. This data tab right here will show all the different objects that we've pushed to our parse backend. By default, we always have one object type, and that's the user object type. So I can go ahead and click on user here, and it appears to be selected right now by default already. Terrific. And you can see that with user selected, I don't have any users right now, so there's no data to display, but I can add a row to create a new user. Data in Parse is kind of divided up like a traditional SQL database is. And you definitely don't need to be familiar with SQL databases to use Parse, but if you are, you know, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be helpful for understanding what's going on here. You could think of the user object as like a type of object, a like very distinct bucket of objects. All of our users will exist on this user collection here. Parse refers to this user object as a type of class. So you can see underneath user, I've got this button to add a class right here. So let's say for example, that our application uh, revolved around say like, uh, let's say we were building, how about Twitter? So if we were building Twitter, we would have users and users would have tweets. So in that particular case, I would have a class of users and a class of tweets. So let's go ahead and create a new user by first selecting user. And then we'll go ahead and click on add a row here. So when we add a row, it creates this kind of empty, undefined row right here. So it's a blank user right now. There's really no definition to it whatsoever. We can go ahead and create a user by setting just the username and the password. So for, pass for the username, we'll set up, uh, I'm going to call my username here just, I'm going to double click, and I'm going to call it tester. And you'll see at the bottom here it says, hey, I can't save this yet because you're missing a user password. So I'll then double click on password, I'll delete the existing one, and I'm just going to set my password to be password. So once I successfully set the username and the password, it successfully creates the object, and it also assigns it a object ID and a created at date. So this is looking pretty good here. Notice that when I set the password, it immediately becomes hidden. So Parse is really good about security in general. Anyone who creates a user on your system with your application, you will not be able to read their password at all. You can't, it's just, it's totally invisible at all times. Parse makes that completely invisible to you so you never really have to worry about security. So whenever we try to log a user in, we're really gonna delegate that like, you know, comparing of passwords behavior to, to Parse. Like Parse is gonna take the password that we're attempting to log in with and it's going to say, okay, yep, it matches it, or no, it doesn't. And we don't really get any access to that password at all. You'll also notice that on the left-hand side here, when I created that user, my user count now went up to one. Okay, so we've now added one user with username tester and password passer, password to our app. I'm going to go back over to simulator, bring up the Chrome debugger, I'm just gonna refresh, I don't really need to, but I will anyways. And if you recall, in my code, whenever I successfully log in right here, I'm gonna console log just the user. So let's go ahead and attempt to log in with tester and password. And I'm gonna sign in and you'll see parse user and my ID right here of mmxbr blah, blah, blah is equal to the object ID on this table right here. So that's fantastic. It means that we just successfully logged into Parse. It means that we just successfully, uh, you know, we submitted the username and password. Parse automatically made a request to, the, to its own backend right here. It verified the username and password and said, yep, checks out. This user is now logged in. So this is fantastic, really good. Obviously though, well, we logged in, but nothing really 
no real indication um, you know, to the, to the user here that they were successfully logged in here. So I think we still need to have a little bit of work to do. Let's tackle that in the next section.